Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. Today, as promised, we're going to talk about one of the many QNAP applications that are available. Hope you enjoy it. Hello, this is Mike Fauché and thank you for listening to the channel. Um, one of the things I want to do today is, um, as many of you know, the QNAP is one of my favorite units. I have several of them and I use them for virtually everything around the house. Um, they're certainly a critical piece of hardware for me. And one of the things that makes them useful is the various suites of applications that are available from their app store. And I, I would like to start covering some of them, you know, over the next few videos. But tonight I'd like to actually to start with one that I think is just super critical. Um, it really should be the very first app that we ever install on a QNAP and you know it's something that you want to set up properly and specifically I'm talking about the hybrid backup sync so if you look here on my desktop you'll see I've downloaded an application called hybrid backup sync it's different than the one that's put on by default this one here has a few more options and it's been a little bit more updated and recommend you use this one and I'm going to walk you through kind of the whole setup and how it works now just to give you a little background I have had it sort of a tainted history with um, losing data so many years ago um, I lost I lost um, all of my data not once but twice um, from hard drive failures and I kind of swore after that that I would really step up my game when it came to backups and I've tried a variety of different backups going all the way back to Windows Home Server. But for the last couple of years, this has really been my go-to solution. And I want to walk you through what I do, um, which you may find to be completely an overkill. But if you can take portions of my recommendations here and, you know, come up with your own strategy, I think you'll be quite happy with the results. So let's get in a little bit into the into the application itself. So let's go ahead and first launch it. And again, if it's not installed, just go to the App Store and install it. When it comes up, you'll see kind of the dashboard gives you kind of a confusing summary. Um, and what you'll want to do is click on All Jobs. Now, this is where you have a listing of pretty much everything that you do. Um, so from your remote jobs to your cloud jobs to any incoming jobs that you might have, which I don't have any on this particular one. So the, um, what I'm doing right now is using one NAS to basically store all of my data and ultimately that gets backed up to a secondary NAS. So I wanna talk about how you set up a job and um, kind of the steps you go through. So the first thing that you need to do depending on on um, which approach you want to take first um, there's two different avenues there's one is creating a remote job if you happen to have two NAS units or if you happen to have an external drive attached to your NAS unit then you can create a local job if you have a second NAS or multiple NASs the one you want to use is a remote job and of course you have the option of the cloud jobs, which cover um, Google Drive, OneDrive, um, obviously Amazon. There's there's a whole bunch of uh, providers that are listed that allow you to actually select the one that you want to use. Okay, I want to walk you through setting up a, a job to a secondary NAS because I think that's the most complicated one. Um, only because there's a couple of steps. It's not really that hard, but there is a couple of steps involved. So um, these are obviously the ones I got set up and we can talk about those a little bit later. But I want to first start with popping over to the other NAS unit, which um, you have to enable um, rsync. So in this particular case, all I'm going to do is put a checkbox there put a username and password. Now this has more than two characters. It just happens to only show two, but you create the username and password that you want. And that's a server to server password. It's not, um, it has nothing to do with users or anything like that. 
And then once you're done with that, hit apply. That's all you have to do to set up the remote uh, NAS unit to accept a backup job. So let's pop over back here to our primary NAS where we're going to basically do all the backing up from. And let's create a remote job first off. So let's create a, uh, we're going to hit create sync job. And we're going to do one way because all we're going to do is go from my primary NAS to a secondary NAS. I don't want to go back, but back and forth. I just want to move the data from the primary, or actually copy the data from my primary to the secondary NAS. So I'm going to hit one way to a local remote. I'm going to use rsync, hit next. And the first thing that's going to come up here is my setup screen. Now, um, there's a couple things you're going to do here, and the sequence is somewhat important. So the first thing you're going to do is give this a name. Um, and then you need to pick the remote server or the remote NAS. Okay. Um, if you haven't already created it, if you've created it, it's going to already appear here. But if you haven't created it from another backup job, the first time what you're going to do is create it. So I'm going to give it, I'll leave the default name for now. I'm going to give it the IP address that it's on. And here I'm going to put the username that I created um, on the remote. And then I'm going to test it. And as you can see, it's processing, it's testing. I can stop it at this point. Click OK. And now I've created a remote sync server. Now you'll see that I have two of them, but obviously you're only going to need one. So once you've actually created this the first time, that will always be there on the drop down dialog box because you're going to be creating multiple sets and you don't want to go through this hassle all the time. So next thing you're going to do is Pick the source folder that you want. So I'm going to drop this down. It's going to connect to the NAS and I'm just going to pick the download folder here just for the heck of it. And then it's going to say what destination do you want it to. Now this destination folder is reading the remote NAS. It's not reading uh, the local but it's actually what you're trying to connect to. So it will take a couple seconds to refresh all the directories. Just for the argument, I'm going to put it on the same destination folder. First, you have to add it, then click apply. And you will see that this particular test has been set up. Now, notice all of mine say scheduled and this says manual. That's because there's a couple things we didn't cover. So we're going to go back in and I'm going to show you. And you're going to want to do these as you're creating them, obviously. But the first thing you do is under advanced settings, is pick the schedule. So we'll make it weekly at three o'clock. We're good to go. The other thing that's kind of important that you need to set, it's under option, uh, I'm sorry, under policy, is that um, if you've got your NAS unit to configure, uh, or you've got it configured to take snapshots, um, you'll be fine. But if you're not configured to take snapshots like I am. I don't particularly care for snapshots for a couple different reasons. Um, performance being one of them. What I do is I disable the snapshot features across my NAS units, but if I do that I need to make sure I check off this box that says do not take a snapshot for this job because it will error on you. It will try and um, it, after it completes or tries to complete, it will try to do a backup or a snapshot and everything get really confused and you'll get a bunch of error message and the job will never go through. So again, if you do not enable backup or snapshots, uh, make sure that when you create each job that you've checked off this box along with your schedule. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Click back and hit apply. And now you're going to see that that job, um, I didn't change the schedule. So I can also get to the schedule from here. So I'm going to say periodically daily at two 
and now that should take. Okay, so now you see it says scheduled two o'clock. It's gonna it hasn't started yet. It has not been run at all since we just created it, and you're basically good to go. It's telling you it's gonna back up at two at two a.m. every single day. So uh, that kind of completes creating the jobs for a remote job. And obviously if you had a local disk, it would be even easier because for that, all you would have to do is create a sync job or a backup job to a local folder, folder that was attached via USB you know, to the device. I don't put any external devices on my NAS units you know, other than the expansion unit. So I don't, none, of, none of them are gonna actually show up. But it's one option. Again, it depends on how much um, how much data you're actually trying to back up. Um, if you're trying to back up, you know, 20 terabytes, then having an external drive is, you know, maybe an issue. So you got to take a look and see what what your needs are and kind of adjust accordingly. But if you're going to back up, you know, three to five terabytes, you can easily get a six to ten terabyte drive you know, in an external enclosure and just plug it in because it, you know, it doesn't need to have necessarily have, you know, RAID or anything like that. Although I would recommend some kind of a mirroring device, some kind of external device that has two drives mirrored together just for that extra level of redundancy. Um, and if you back that up to say two six terabyte drives, um, you can get quite a bit of backup, you know, onto that external enclosure which don't really cost all that much um, you can get them fairly inexpensive that do kind of a mirroring and just put in your own drives you know whether it's a couple terabytes or six or ten or whatever you need so um, that gives you the option to use the local storage here so the last one I want to talk about is cloud backup now these all of these run almost exactly the same by picking the location and destination the only difference is the cloud backup um, does not really have, you know, uh, doesn't get any options for, you know, ignoring the snapshot or anything like that. And obviously you don't have an external drive to worry about. This is going straight to a cloud. So if I click on create sync job, um, I'm going to do the same thing, one way sync, and I want to sync this one to the cloud. And I want to do local to cloud. So I'm going to do that. And here's where it kind of gets a little bit interesting because you can see here the listing of the different providers from Amazon to, um, you know, Amazon S3, Amazon Drive, Alibaba, Box, Dropbox, Google Drive, High Drive, uh, OneDrive for Business, OneDrive. Um, so you got a few options um, that you can pick from. You pick the one that's most appropriate for you and select that as your destination. So once you would pick this, once you select the type of configuration you want, when you hit next, it'll ask you to authenticate the application. Once you authenticate the application, you can now begin your backup. So, you know, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Um, but again, it's one of these applications that's just phenomenal. I'll give you a quick look at how I've got mine set up to give you a better idea. I've only got two that are backing up to the cloud. Both of them are going to an S3 bucket, so it's kind of straightforward to, to set up. S3 is not the easiest thing in the world to deal with, but once you do have it configured, um, you know, creating additional buckets and putting your folders in there is not a huge problem. But here you'll see that I'm taking the entire backup folder that I created, and this is where I'm backing it up at. I'm going under um, a uh, bucket name um, with a backup uh, folder in it, and that's pretty much it. That's all I've got to set up. There's not much in the advance except the schedule, and of course I'm going to set that, and you're good to go. So again, I'm in my particular case, I've taken only the most critical data, backed that up to using hybrid um, hybrid backup sync. I've actually backing up all my critical data to S3 on a weekly basis, and then all of my common stuff is done, you know. And there's two pages of these is done, you know, either daily, weekly, or monthly, depending on what the schedule or what the need dictates, um, and. So for me, that gives me at least three copies of the data at any given time. 
I happen to go a fourth one, which is more of um, taking the data from one of the NAS units and copying it using a program called Always Sync and copying additional copy over to an encrypted folder on a different system. Again, you don't have to do that. Um, this is just what I do. And I'm going to post a link to my backup chart and strategy just to kind of get an idea. And I'll show it here in just a moment. But this kind of gives you a better overall feel for how to back up. I really urge you to spend a little time with this application, really make it work for you. Um, and just get it, spend the time getting it configured the way you want, make, you know, get the, create the schedule the way you want and just, you know, make the best of it. Can't recommend enough, you know, doing some kind of backup scheme. And then here's an application that's really well done. And it's actually built in to you every QNAS unit. So if you got a QNAP unit, um, just give this a shot. It's not going to cost you anything. Um, and it's definitely worthwhile. And again, if you don't have a, another NAS, which many people don't have multiple NASs, um, get a hold of an old um, external hard drive. Think about using your, your cloud storage, your Google Drive, your OneDrive. Do any of those that gets the data somewhere off-site um, so that you can have some level of protection because I can assure you it you know it's not a question of if it's a question of when and you need to be prepared for it so this is my recommendation I hope you've enjoyed um, you know the quick tutorial um, about the application and um, again I'll post a link to all of my QNAP products as well as my backup strategy chart um, in the notes. So if you're interested, please give those a check. Um, and if you have any questions, please uh, post them in the comments. I try to get do the best I can to answer as many comments as I can or questions as I can. Truly really appreciate everybody supporting the site. And I look forward to the next video. Take care.